a very warm welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer, and it's really great to have you here with me on the Memory Lane 80 show. Now, we have got the best treat for you this evening. Not only have we got 80s legend Kim Wilde, but we also have her famous father, the British godfather of rock and roll. Yes, Marty Wilde is here too. And here is what happened when I caught up with them both. Kim and Marty, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much, an absolute pleasure. It's our pleasure, it's our pleasure. Our pleasure, right. yeah, lovely to oh, see you. Thank you lovely so much. Lovely to see you too, Dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is good. Yeah. Uh, and Marty, what have you been up to in lockdown? Because I know that you're a keen golfer, aren't you? Yes, I've been playing uh, golf most days, like, uh, uh, like other redundant people, you know, I've been out there. And uh, yeah, I mean, in our age group, you know, a lot of my friends, uh, the elderly people in many ways, obviously, they, they have time on their hands and, and it's a great way to spend time. It's an important, important time to be, uh, to, to be out mentally. You, you need that. Yeah. We all need it. <laughs> yeah, completely. And Kim, I know you're an you know, amazing gardener, aren't you? Have you had much time in the garden? Oh yeah, I mean, I was so lucky to have a garden, spend a lot of time out there. Uh, we've got the vegetables growing again, so that's been a wonderful thing to get back into. Cause I hadn't done it for quite a few years, so I'd sort of forgotten all my tricks. <laughs> and um, yeah, well, I, just be, I, we've got beautiful countryside here in Hertfordshire, wow. so I've been out walking in that a lot, and um, it's been absolutely beautiful. Yes. Oh, well, I need some tips from your garden, Kim, because I'm not a very good gardener, but I mean, it's a real skill, isn't it? Well, you know, I mean, I've been doing it quite a lot of years now. So, you know, you, you kind of pick up a few tricks, but you're always learning. Yeah. That's a wonderful thing about gardening. And um, I still haven't managed to get dad gardening, though, have I, dad? Oh. Well, my, my, my nearest thing to do with gardening is watching the chap on, the, on his on the, uh, the grass cutter going round and round in my garden. And that's, <laughs> that's the nearest I, I get Marty. to it. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Mm. Now, um, obviously you guys are from, you know, such a big musical family. Um, and I guess the biggest thing, Marty, is to be able to give your love of music to Kim and the rest of your children. Yeah, yes, it's, uh, I mean, I, I've often said, um, I mean, you know, like all fathers, you know, you're good and bad, you have good, you had good points as being a father and bad points. But the one thing which uh, I can say honestly from my heart, the best thing I ever gave to all my family uh, was a, an intense, not a good, but an intense love of music. And that obviously my Kimmy and with Roxanne and, and yeah. Ricky, you know, and, and, and the, the whole family, Scarlett and, and all the, whole, they, they love her, they, they, they love music. I gave yeah, them that, I think. Did. Yeah, and it was just so lovely. I saw a little clip of when you got your MBE and Kim, you were just so happy for your dad, weren't you? It was a <laughs> proud moment, wasn't it? Oh, it really was such fun going to the palace with dad wow. and mum. Uh, it was a beautiful day and um, it meant a lot to us all. Um, we all big fans of the Queen and, and the royal family. Um, and we, we, we love our Queen. <laughs> so it was great to, to actually see her there. Putting that award on Dad was one of the best moments of my life. <laughs> wow, wow, just amazing. Uh, now the first song uh, we're gonna play out um, is a cover of the Elvis track, That's All Right Mama, uh, which Marty, you played live at the Stag Theatre. What memories does that bring back for you? I think probably uh, when when I was a young man, uh, I, would, I bought I was I bought an album uh, from a friend of mine. He said I've got an album I don't want. I said who is it? He said it's Elvis Presley, and this was the very beginning of Presley's career. And uh, I'd heard uh, Heartbreak Hotel, but I, I wasn't mad about it at that point. I, I couldn't tell much about Elvis's voice. So he said uh, I said how much do you want for this Elvis Presley album? He said seventeen and six. And I still got it, <clears throat> and of course with that album, uh, the "That's All Right" was the track that I picked out 
as the one that, uh, apart from all the whole album, was just, it's just pure magic, but it was the one song that really hit me. And of course, that's, it started off Elvis, Elvis's career. That yeah. is the original song. And, uh, so it, me singing it is just a tribute to Elvis. I, I mean, I say that in the clip anyway, but it's a tribute to Elvis. He was just Brilliant. wonderful. He was wonderful. Absolutely. Well, here it is. Marty Wild and the Wildcat singing That's All Right, Mama. Check this out. We pay tribute now to the Sun label, to Sam Phillips for his vision and his integrity, to the great artists on the Sun label, not the least being a man who put the Sun label on the world stage. Have we got any Elvis Presley fans in tonight? Well, then that's all right, Mama. That's all right for you. That's all right, Mama. Just hate it when you do. That's all right. That's all right. America because obviously Kim you performed the wonderful single but Marty and your son Ricky uh, actually wrote the song didn't you yeah uh, yeah we did yeah yeah we wrote it in um, in our home in Hertfordshire and um, didn't never dreaming it would have the success um, that it that it has had it's been quite quite incredible quite absolutely incredible. and was it true that you wrote the song in a day is that right uh, it would probably have been two days, no more than two days. Um, I mean, I, I had the, uh, there was, uh, Rick played this, this part to me, it was on this mini synth, and um, I, I had the, the title straight, straight away, uh, Kids in America was going to be the title, so from then on it was, well, I was focused. <laughs> 
Wow, love it. And Kim, obviously this is your first single and you almost became sort of overnight, you know, a massive success. And you were only 20 years old, weren't you? I was, yeah, I was still living at home. Um, my mum and dad had just had um, our baby sister. So I was oh. spending a lot of time looking after Roxanne with my mum. And, uh, but I really wanted to get into the music industry. I, I actually wanted to become a session singer because mum told me the rates were really good and you could, and then I could use my skill because I've been brought up to uh, pick out harmonies and sing songs. And um, for me, singing was a really natural thing to do. So I, I thought, well, the best job in the world would be to have a job where I can do that and get paid for it. So I was always, I had, I had an eye on wanting to, to do that. But um, yeah, Kids in America got written right in the middle of me leaving art college and looking to see if I could get into the session, onto the session circuit. And, and all of a sudden, Rick and Marty started writing these fantastic songs. And so it really was about being in the right place at the right time. It was yes. real, real, really good luck. Yes, brilliant stuff. Well, I just love it. As soon as the pulse kicks in, it gets me excited. So let's play it out. Here is Kids in America, uh, which hit number two in the UK in 1981. Here we go. Now, Marty, you were renowned as one of the pioneers of UK rock and roll. Uh, you, you were the original British teen heartthrob uh, and you had four top five hits by the age of 20. Uh, now, you began performing as Reg Patterson and you were spotted by Larry Parnes in 1957, who persuaded you to change your name. How did you feel about that? Uh, I wasn't very happy at the time. Um, <laughs> I was not very happy. I didn't yeah. like uh, he, he I, I didn't like the word Marty. It sounded like some some American kid, you know, some goofy American child, and um, <laughs> and wild. I couldn't work out at all. So I, I I thought he was crazy. But he 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 said, well, I'll, well, I'll toss a coin, and um, you know, whoever wins, uh, you're either going to be Reg Patterson or or Reg whatever. No. But he won. He won both times. He did, yeah. Oh, and, uh, I mean, great, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm grateful brilliant. now. It, it's, um, it, 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 it's, uh, yeah, it's the right name. <laughs> of course, absolutely brilliant. And your music has had such an impact, hasn't it? I mean, you can see things have really changed, but it still really influences music today, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, I, knew it, <clears throat> I knew it would. I mean, it's been one of the... It was one of the greatest... Uh, 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 sort of uh, impacts into music that there's ever been. Other than classical and obviously jazz uh, music, yes. they, they played a huge part. But, um, <clears throat> you know, rock and roll without question, uh, it's, it's influenced all kinds of music ever since. And, um, mm -hmm. and I, I remember I, 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 they asked me, one of the newspapers in, in 1957, they said, how long will this last? And I said, well, I can't speak for my career, I said, but I think rock and roll is going to last uh, possibly almost forever. And I wow. was right. You were right, Marty. Oh, yeah. And uh, we've right. got a question from Ron from Purley, who's watching. Hi, Ron. Um, he wants to know, did you give advice as a father to Kim or was it more professional? And did Kim take the advice? <laughs> Uh, I think I think uh, Kim picked out. Uh, she's got a lot of good sense, like her mother. Uh, she picks out the right things. I think I mean, some of the things I said to her probably would have been a bit goofy, but um, yeah, by and large, sometimes uh, uh, simple things, um, treating people with respect. You know, basic, very basic things, really. And you know, to listen to people, treat them with respect. Don't get big time. You know, stay on, stay at a level. It's just, and, and also, our family, all of us, uh, it's a job. You know, we're not here as some mega super divas or whatever. We're just ordinary people doing a job that we adore, but it is a job. And you've got yeah. to keep that in mind. The minute you get over that, the minute you get over that, we work, Kim and I both work with people where it tipped over the other way. And uh, it took over, you know, this... this this phoniness or whatever you want to call it um, yeah, and well you know we've tried to stay away from that we've tried to yeah. it's quite basic basic uh, principles really yeah absolutely and Kim obviously having a father in the business you know you were really young you were 20 but it must be nice having someone that can guide you 
Well, you know, I, as I said, I was living at home. It was great to have a family to go home to and have a, a degree of normality in a pretty frantic uh, lifestyle that ensued. I mean, I'd never travelled very far before in my life, and all of a sudden I was living at Heathrow Airport and I was turning up at TVs and doing all kinds of uh, interviews and stuff like this. Um, it was pretty intense. Um, and like Dad said, you know, I... I it was really hard work. Um, yes. I know some, sometimes it doesn't look that way when you see people ha hanging out on stage and having the time of their lives, which we do. Um, but there is a lot of stuff that goes on that is hard work. And, um, um, and certainly as I was growing up, I was very aware of that. The hours that Dad put in and yeah. the, I certainly took a, a leaf out of my, old, my Dad's book, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, a lot of people don't realise, do they? The hours that go in, they just see the glamorous bits. But uh, I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually working with my dad at the moment uh, in my home studio. But he says I'm too bossy, which I'm not going to have that. <laughs> not going to have that at all. <laughs> uh, we're going to play out a teenager in love. I love this tune, Marty, uh, from 1959, uh, number two. But you weren't actually a teenager, were you, Marty? You were 21. No. Was that right? Uh, I, oh, I was 20 then, I think, 20. Oh, I was 20. Just. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't, I, uh, was I, I can't remember. No, no, I wasn't a teenager. You're right. You're correct. I wasn't. I felt, I was a charlatan. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Here we go. Each time we have a quarrel, it almost breaks my heart. So afraid that we will have to part Each night I ask the stars up above Why must I be a teenager in love? One day I feel so happy Next day I feel so sad I guess I learned to take The good with the bad Stars up above. Why must I be a teenager in love? I cried a tear for nobody but you. I'll be a lonely one if you should say we're through. Now, if you want to make me cry, that won't be so hard to do. And if you should say goodbye, I'll still go on loving you Each night I ask the stars up above Why must I be a teenager in love? I cried a tear for nobody but you I'll be a lonely one if you should say it was true Now if you want to make me cry so hard to do And if you should say goodbye I'll still go on loving you Each night I ask The stars up above Why must I be a teenager in love? Why must I be a teenager? Now, Kim, I want to talk about your career because you are the most charted British female solo act of the 80s. You sold over 10 million albums and 20 million singles. But like you said earlier, you actually started at art college. Did you not maybe yes. think, oh, I'll go to stage school or anything? Or how did that come about? Well, I had been doing a bit of uh, backing vocal work with my dad, so I had, we, in fact, we played the Palladium one night, didn't we, Dad? Um, mm -hmm. And I was backing vocals and um, uh, with my mum, I think, I was on the back, back of the stage. Um, yeah, so I was at art college, but I wasn't really seriously thinking about um, pursuing an, uh, a career in art. I think I actually went to art college because I hoped I'd meet some other musicians and then we could start a band and do something like that. Um, and when I got there, I realised that everyone wanted to do art, and, um, which I did as well. But I, I, little did I know that actually the music, my music uh, journey was about to start, but at home. Um, yeah. So I was looking everywhere else for it to happen and it was right under my nose. And I think that's very true in life. 
of yeah. a lot of people you know they they're, they're looking everywhere for what it is that they need in their life and actually mm. very often it's right there in front of them um so i was that girl and yeah and then all of a sudden kids in america w changed my life um yeah. i was really really lucky uh, but I was so ready for it. All my life I wanted to be a singer. I love singing. I saw the magic that uh, Dad brought to the stage when he was performing, um, the joy that he brought to people. But um, I think even more than the joy for that he brought to people, or the joy you can bring to people with music, is the joy you feel inside. It's, it's really second to none. There's nothing you can... Um, compare it to it's a, a, I feel like I was born to do this singing and uh, it's not that I, haven't, I even think I have got a great voice or anything it's, it's a oh, voice yeah. and I'm um, <laughs> I just it's a voice that I need to use yeah. um, and I think dad feels the same way you know he, he's, he, he doesn't rate himself overly highly you know he thinks he's a good enough singer and but you know he he does it because he has to um, and that's something we both have in common, and it comes from inside our voice. Um, and I think that's why it resonates with the public. Yeah, absolutely. Well, just to confirm, you guys both have incredible voices, and you should hear mine. I'm tone deaf, honestly. It's not good. <laughs> uh, uh, but Kim, um, obviously you kind of got married and you had children and you became a landscape gardener, but I feel like you still have your real passion for music, don't you? Oh yeah, very, very much so. I mean, music is at the heart of my life and, and that of my family, all of my family, they're all musicians and singers and uh, musicians. It's, it's just part of our everyday life. It's, it's like our, our, our religion. We're not a really over, overtly religious family. We weren't brought up with religion. Music is, has been our religion, I would yeah. say. Um, it's Brilliant. the thing we believe in and it's the thing that's brought us a lot of joy and and through that joy to a lot of lot more people. So it's been an, an incredibly benevolent and, and generous um, uh, life to, to be involved in. And the only other thing that's been equally as benevolent and overly generous has been gardening. Gardening is just exactly the same. Um, you know, the little you put in, you get a massive amount back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, music and gardening, they, they have a lot in common. Well, you both brought us a lot of joy. Um, I've got a question uh, from Katie who says, what is the secret to you looking so young? And I want to know too. <laughs> now, you're talking to my dad, aren't you? I'm talking to both of you. What is it? it's, it's the genes, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but you do, you, you know. What is the secret? We want to know. Is it yoga? Dad, Dad, I, tell him. I can tell him. It's, tell him it's the polytint, Dad. It, well, it's apart from it. I think she she's got good features. She she inherited them from her mother, not from me. I mean, definitely from her mother. And uh, yeah, you can. In fact, as I'm watching her now, as I, when I when I watch Kim on television or anything like that, I can very often see her mother so clearly. Aww. So um, yeah. Oh, but, how I lovely. Mean, yeah, she she and she got some things from me, um, but, but, but but the best things I think from her mum. <laughs> now I want to talk about your song. You keep me hanging on. Um, absolute tune. I love the wind machine. I try and recreate it, Kim. Just brilliant. Yes, yes. Every every everyone needs to have a, a mini wind machine with them at all times for just to bring some drama into their life. I always have one on stage with me oh, for, that, for that very same reason. Oh. Always have one, yeah. Celts keep me cool, and, and there's something sort of otherworldly about having an air. <laughs> Isn't there, Dad? Yeah, there is, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Well, we don't have a wind machine here in the studios, but do join along at home. Here is You Keep Me Hanging On, number two in Whoa. 1986. How brilliant to have Marty Wilde and Kim Wilde with us on the show this evening. And I thought it is time for a Marty Wilde classic. It's called Donna, just a brilliant tune. Number three in 1959. Here we go.
talk about your brilliant new single, Running Together. I heard it and it made me feel automatically warm and feel good. And I just wanted to listen to it to again straight away. Just brilliant. And I know that you actually filmed it in lockdown, but it really feels like you reunite and you come together. Marty, I just yeah. love it. Yeah, well, uh, when, I, when I wrote it, um, <clears throat> uh, I, I, it was quite a serious song for me in some ways because I wanted a, it was kind of dedicated really to, it was written about my family, um, all my family, my wife and my children. And it was, you know, doing things together. I mean, it started off by, I watched uh, some, uh, I, did a, I was at a charity event that I had to go to and I watched all the runners, we, we set off all these runners and uh, I watched and I remember seeing these two people, they were holding hands and I thought, wow, uh, running together is something you can say about yeah. life. It can be your, your marriage, it can be you and your family, it can be you and your football team, it can be, you know, people that stay with things and it, the, you, two people, uh, like, for example, you know, two people are stronger than one person nearly every time, not all the time, yeah. but nearly every time. And running together is is about people. And when I saw the video, I didn't realise it would hit people that way, uh, because they see the that very happy, um, which I'm I'm happy about. You know, I, 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 I it's one of the few songs um, other than Jessamine that that I I'm, I'm very I really am quite proud of. And obviously, kids in America, but I'm, yeah. I'm very very proud of it. Yeah, your voice, your vocals just sound brilliant, I've got to say. And uh, Kim, how nice was it singing, you know, because Roxanne's in the video and the Wildcats and Marty, yeah. so it must have been really nice for you. Well, what's really exciting is that it's a song from Dad's album, uh, which he's been working on for the last few years, and I'm really proud to be a part of, and some of the other tracks as well, which are still to come. Um, and Roxanne, my sister, she sings a number of them too. There's some beautiful work um, on this album, I know my dad's really proud of it. So I'm really chuffed to be part of uh, the whole campaign, really, to get this album out to the world and show that my dad is still as strong as ever vocally and as a as a songwriter. Um, so yes, I'm just going to be basking in his reflected glory for a few more months. And it was really fun to make. Um, a lockdown video for him we've made a few yeah. actually uh, oh. and that was that was really good fun and and uh, unexpected um so yeah so there's lots more great surprises to come from dad's new album which is coming out i think in uh, at the end of the summer in the autumn yes called running, right. called running together running together i love that well yeah. i've been trying to sing along uh, to this because i love it so much but i can get in a little clap bit i like the, i like that bit in this song yeah, that's my favorite yeah. bit brilliant so uh, we're gonna leave the show uh playing out running together uh but marty wilde and kim wilde what an absolute honor to have you both <laughs> together i've been very lucky thank you so much for your time a real treat for us here on the memory lane 80 show bless you Haley. thank you so much yeah, thank you so much privilege. Our Thank privilege. you. It's Marty Wilde and Kim Wilde, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I always knew it was a special time. I knew it right from the start. Those memories will stay with me forever. But things will change and time can wait for no one. But deep in my heart, days I recall, I remember them always. Let's 
come to the end of the show but thank you so much for tuning in this evening and I think on behalf of all of us a huge thank you to absolute legends Kim Wilde and Marty Wilde what an absolute honour and privilege to have them here with us on the Memory Lane 80s show now remember I love hearing from you please do get in contact details are on the screen below stay safe and I will see you same time same place next week that's the reason for